Welcome back to the Navy Sports Magazine, presented by the Navy Federal Credit Union. Time to shine the light on Navy track and field this week on the women's side. And Molly Chapman joins us. Obviously, a, a big meet for you all winning the, the star. Now you have to ramp it up again as the Patriot League championships here are approaching. From a mental aspect, the adulation, the celebration, how do you ramp that back down? to eventually ramp yourself back up here now trying to chase another championship? I think um, it comes down to the fact that, you know, after Army, it was just such an electric meet, but we have a meeting all the time afterwards, making sure that we, we um, stay humble. We're not like screaming our, our wins um, because we all, we're always aware that the competition is on the other end of the, of the field house at the end of the day. And so we know that they can hear us celebrating. So um as electric as it is, we try to mellow ourselves out leading up into the competition and train just as hard leading up to Patriots as we would for Army. And hopefully just um, we bring the same amount of heat going into it. Um, it is a little bit more difficult being that it's not a home meet, but we have definitely like a large group of people that know how to bring the energy. So we just rely on them for sure. You found your season's best uh, triple jump in the Army meet. Where do you feel like you are right now in your training? As many people may not know, you're a jumper, not only the triple jump, but the high jump as well. Where do you feel you're at here uh, as this indoor season starts to wind down? For a triple jump, I don't get as many reps in uh, as like a normal person would that their primary event is triple jump. So I would like to be um, – getting past the 40 foot barrier that's been my kind of threshold in the last couple of years uh obviously i have to split my time between the two events so i don't get i i get half the training essentially right. uh, as the other triple jumpers um so considering that i think i'm in a really good spot because i broke 39 and that was my first time doing it from a full approach this year at all um leading into army it was a surprise for the army girls that that i technically jumped 39 and that was my PR because up until then I dealt with an ankle injury so my coach had held me back and just had me run from half approaches and any other triple jumps I'd done this season so um, my PR looked to be like 35 or 36 and then all of a sudden for Army we just decided to to rip it and just go with my full approach and it paid off I wasn't in pain so I hope that I can just keep building on that to break 40 feet. What makes a person now, obviously, in your background, you've got gymnastics and cheerleading. Those are those are normal things for, you know, young people uh, to get involved in. When did track and field become an emphasis for you? And in particular, uh, you know, gymnastics and cheerleading, you can torture your body in different ways. But high jumping and triple jumping makes you do it in some more rather unconventional ways. Well, right. So I was a gymnast for 12 years. I was a cheerleader for three. Um, I started doing track late into my sophomore year in high school. So I was, I was late to the game and I really didn't get um, marks that would have me qualified for D1 recruitment until the end of my senior season. Um, once I started hitting those marks, it was probably February or March, 2018. 2018 was my graduating year of high school as well. So um, I started getting those marks and I realized that I might have a talent in this and I actually quit gymnastics at that time. Um, cheer was over with because that was a fall sport and I only did it for my high school. Um, and I think I fell naturally into high jump because they tended to call people over to the high jump mat in high school practice that knew how to do a backflip that weren't afraid of going backwards. And, you know, there's very few people that off the bat are going to be able to do that. But obviously with my background, I, I had a leg up there. Um, triple jump, triple jump just kind of came as like a uh, nobody else wanted to do it so I'll try it throw me in there and then I ended up loving the technique aspect of it so I was gonna say doing anything to to be a participant a lot of times kids want to do something specific just to them instead of just get out there and participating so it's a great path to getting out there let me ask you what, what is it about Loudoun County High it's been so good at the Naval Academy particularly uh, with female athletes here uh, in, in recent years. Just what is it about your school, that area, that breeds this type of quality competitor uh, that's able to go on to the Division One level and certainly in this case uh, match the, the rigors that the Naval Academy uh, puts upon you as well? Well, I think uh, 
I, I think our area is a highly competitive area. I think um, I, I went up against in 2016, that was the first year I was, I was on the track team at my school and I had to go against Drew, Drew Hunter, who was, he ran for Loudoun Valley and, and was the first high school male uh, mile runner to go pro right out of high school. So he was our, you know, he was across the way and he gave our distance guys a hard time. And then we had Wyney Kalani, who she was at Heritage High School and she went, um, went on to, I believe she placed really high this year in the Boston Marathon or went to the trials or something extreme. I saw her name on a headline for something and she's always been a talent. So we always just had massive amounts of competition around us. And I think that really forces a person to step up to the plate. Obviously good coaching and quality, um, quality clubs everywhere to join the sport as well. So that definitely gave us a leg up. Wearing that sweater, what did it mean in a year where the Naval Academy has dominated star competition to be able to add another one uh, to that incredible display uh, out on that flagpole in the front of the Naval Academy? I think this star meet was um, the, definitely the most important that I've ever felt we've had, uh, at least for the women's side, because it was so much closer this time than ever before. Um, leading up into my competition for the high jump, we were like 10 points down, uh, something, something crazy like that. And it's a small meet, 10 points is significant in a, in a dual meet like that. Um, so the fact that going into literally the last two or three events, we were down so much to be able to rebuild it based on energy and adrenaline alone, um, winning it was so much more significant, I feel as though it'd been before. Um, and especially it being my event, you know, high jump isn't always the focus of a meet. It's, it's sometimes it's in the very beginning of the meet, most people miss it. So for us to be at the end and to show them what we got and for me and Taylor both to PR and tie the school record at that moment, that was a huge moment for us and I'll never forget it. I was going to say, you, you mentioned that there at the very end, being able to do something like that on that stage. And as you know, Army Navy meets games mean that much more. There's a lot more people there uh, just to be able to do that in that audience and obviously lift your team, you know, part of the leadership, of course, the Naval Academy prides itself on. And, you know, as individuals within the team concept, you know, we talk, you know, to, to athletes, that's the most fascinating part to me to be an individual athlete, but your discipline lift the entire team. Is that what really makes that, you know, stick out to you? And, and obviously, as you said, something you'll never forget. A hundred percent, because one of the reasons I love track is that if I have a bad day, I can go home the next day and look at where I can pinpoint my flaws at that meet and I can come back and change it the next day. However, when it comes to a meet where all the pressure is on you, I mean, in that moment, I wasn't competing for myself at all. I was competing for my team. I knew if I don't get this third jump at five foot seven right now, I'm getting third. If I get third, we're potentially going to lose this thing. So I really didn't have a choice, and it really came down to all the people around me. Molly, fascinating stuff. Appreciate the time. Best of luck as you all chase a Patriot League championship. Thank you so much for having me today.